Kelsey and then they have really been a lot of work that's gone into this day. This day is a stepping stone for what we're doing, trying to do the rest of this year. So I'm thanking the Frasers for kind of starting us off because if our mental health ain't right, then if our mindset's not right, then it's hard to work together, hard to worship together, hard to plan together and go forward. So this is a staple foundation. And after camp meeting, then we're going to get to prayer. Because we can't do anything. So see, the mind's got to be clear. You can't even pray right if the mind's not clear. Some of you know it. You try to pray and all thoughts and, and all kind of stuff, pressures and anxieties, and you can't even keep a connection with God. So this mental health is very important. You know, we know that God is trying to save the whole man, the whole person, not just spiritually. We like to focus on the spiritual, and that's 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 salvation, amen. But it's all tied to physical health and mental health, all of those tied together. And so we're thankful for the Frasers for, for being here with us, and we're going to go right into the afternoon session. I don't know if there's a, we need to do Father Abraham or something to get the blood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> get the blood rolling. Oh, yeah. We need to do something. We need to stand up. Oh, yeah. We need to stand up. I, they may have an activity for us. Huh? <laughs> this can't just be holy hands. We need the bodies moving. All right, all right. But we're going to turn it over to the Frasers at this time. We've been fed physically. We've already been fed spiritually, but there's, there's more good stuff where that came from. Thank you. All right. Let us, let us pray. Lord, we're so thankful for what our eyes have seen, ears have heard, what you've already done. Lord, we're thankful that you, in your presence are pleasures forevermore. So as we continue on a little bit longer, continue to tabernacle with us. Lead and guide us is our prayer. May the Holy Spirit cover and touch and transform us. Be with the Fraser team, we do pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we got to turn this on. Coming up. Not yet. I don't see it. Good to fall asleep. Hi. We turned it off, so we got to see if it will work with us. Have to get used to mm. time. Hopefully, we'll get rid of the match. Yeah, that's what we're. That's the next. Oh, yeah. The next thing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Need to turn this back on. So this morning we talked um, about um, the fact that even in our difficulties, God is working with us. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the fact that difficulties can impact your mental health. Mm -hmm. So this afternoon, we're going to talk about one of the challenges that many individuals face, and that is managing conflict. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there can be conflict at home. Mm -hmm. There can be uh -huh. conflict at work. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm sure not here, Pastor. But do you realize that there are churches where there's conflict? So we're going to talk about conflict and conflict. Well, that's why I said not here. But I'm talking about some of the other churches. You've heard about those churches. So we're going to talk about win, lose, or draw, and we're going to look at biblical principles. Had everything turned on and ready to go, and then our mic is is down, so we'll wait a few, a few seconds there, but we'll put it up. You can hear me. Got so we're going to identify and understand some of the primary forms of conflict, okay? And then we want you to think about what's your own personal conflict mm -hmm. style. And finally, we're going to uh, develop some strategies for conflict resolution. Uh, and so that should be the framework that we'll be operating from um, today. All right, and 
and we almost always start with the text and while he's getting set up. Uh, can you all see that text? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Is it possible that someone could read it for us? Yeah, it would be somebody cool. Oh, <laughs> yes, ma'am. Go right ahead. She says she's going to read it for us. So to God, so to, so to God choose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, gentleness and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults. Very good. Faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you. Families like Cain and Abel, 
Conflict. David and Absalom. Mm -hmm. David didn't even want to see his son. And, yeah, and they killed his brother. Mm -hmm. And the church, Paul and Barnabas. The Bible said they disagreed so much that to do what? They had to they separate. separate. Mm -hmm. Peter and Paul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Peter really had an issue. Mm -hmm. Paul had an issue with Peter. Yeah. And they, they, they had conflict. So conflict is all in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so our question to you is, think for a moment about your home and growing up. How did your family manage conflict? How did they manage it? What happened in your family with conflict? Mm -hmm. You don't have to answer out loud. We want you just to think about it. Mm -hmm. And then how did the way your family managed conflict impact you? And that's the critical piece. Yeah. Because if you manage it one way in your family and you move into another family, it's just about, there is no way to pull it together because you said, well, no. And by the way, raising children, you saw your, the way how your parents raised you is different from how the, your wife's parents mm -hmm. raised you. Mm -hmm. now, I don't know if that's a hand back there, young man, or if you're just... <laughs> okay, yes, sir. My mother managed conflict very well. Your mother managed conflict very well. Well, that's good. Most of us, our parents didn't manage conflict very well. <laughs> so I'm glad, I'm glad you, that happened. And you're going to talk about the fact that there are people with different conflict with styles. Different conflict styles. Okay, so we're gonna list, there are, there are if you can go to the next slide. Now, now, I want you, before we move on to the next slide, look at that woman's face. Uh, <laughs> Does that tell you something yes. about how it's gonna start? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> You just look at the facts. And does that happen in churches where you see somebody's face or you think what the face that you're looking at is such a that is going to you're going to start something because that face you look at that face you look at it. so we're talking about conflict styles are found even in as we see something our visual acuity already starts something okay mm -hmm. so there are five major conflict styles we're going to outline them and then we're going to go through them okay. one is avoiding the conflict the next is giving in, standing your ground, compromise, collaborating. Those are the five steps. Now we're gonna go through each one of them and then we're gonna talk about when to use which one. And we As you see those, don't answer, but which is your style? Which one is you? Which one defines the way you normally do things? We're not gonna we're not gonna put anyone on the spot. <laughs> but but we just want you to So let's look at the first one, avoiding the conflict. This is when you simply avoid the issue. You aren't helping the other party reach their goals and you're not pursuing yours. You just say, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna deal with that. I'm not gonna look at it. And there's some of us in church that will do that. There's some of us at work who do that. We will, the thing will come down and, and, it, and we just say nothing and just leave it alone. But what do you think is happening? Build it up here. Build it up We call it banking. Conflict avoiders. They see conflict is coming and they go the other way. Was well, that what you're talking about, Pastor Matt? Uh, conflict of your parents. Okay. Yeah, conflict avoidance. Okay. <laughs> Let's look at the next one. Giving in. So this person engages in a conflict, mm -hmm. but then they give in. Mm -hmm. So this is when you cooperate. See how nicely this is? You cooperate to such a high degree that it may be at your own expense. Uh -huh. Okay, baby, that's where you want to do it fine. We'll do it your way. Mm -hmm. Giving in. Uh -huh. And it actually works against your own goals, objectives, and desired outcomes. Yeah. I, I, I have a person in my house that does that sometimes. I do do it sometimes. Like, okay, is that what you want to do? Fine. We'll yeah. do that. And, and whenever you hear that, you say, okay. That means I'm giving in. Yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm, this is not a battle I want to go to. 
And so it's have it your way. Yeah. But you know whatever you have it your way, you're not having it your there way. There you go. <laughs> oh, no. There you are. <laughs> you know you're not having it your way. <laughs> we, we have done things your way, and then I say to myself, next time, that won't happen. <laughs> Stand your ground. Wow. Stand your ground is this is win-lose situation. You act in a very assertive way to achieve your goals, mm -hmm. your way, without seeking to cooperate with the other party. And it may be at the expense of the other party. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And look at this. My way or the highway. This way, we gonna do it. Mm -hmm. I know the best way, mm -hmm. and this way we gonna do it. Mm -hmm. My way or the highway. <laughs> that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Compromise. This is the other uh, one. Compromise. This is when everyone gives up something in this scenario where neither party really achieves. And by the way, we do that. If a successful government is going to work, they always almost call, uh, compromise. Compromise where the, neither party achieves everything that they want. This requires a moderate level of assertiveness and cooperation. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what's going on in a lot of government organizations. I teach uh, ethics, and one of the things that we talk about is the, the way that people come to some agreement, they compromise, everybody gives up a little something. Mm -hmm. You know, but what does it, does, how does it work? And are people always satisfied? Most of the time, they're not satisfied. Because it's not my way and it's not your way. No, everybody gives up something. And finally, yes. How does it work in a religious organization? So, so let me just say this: what we're going to do, if you hold that, because that's an excellent question, we're going to talk about each of these conflict styles and when it's appropriate. Because our contention is this is appropriate at the right time. And we as a group are going to talk about mm -hmm. the right time. Okay. So if we haven't answered it then, so we can come back to that question. Does that make sense? Thank you so much, Pastor. But, the, but we want your last question. Absolutely. Absolutely. Collaboration. Because, it, by the way, it will jog our minds if we get caught up in something. If you ask a question, we're going to, uh, we believe in the questions being asked. This is where you pair up with the other person, group, to achieve both of your goals. This is how you break free of the win-lose paradigm and seek to win-win. You try to find a novel solution. This can also mean reframing the challenge to create a bigger space and room for everybody's ideas. We, we, I'm, I'm contending with something that happened uh, this year at Oakwood that I believe collaboration is very effective. Because we were cyber attacked. Mm -hmm. Everything went down. Mm -hmm. For two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My contention is, are they? Mm -hmm. The corporate co collaborated. Some of us would have had some ideas to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. You see, because you ask different people. Mm -hmm. And we went someplace and saw, for example, an option that you can use. Mm -hmm. So this is when, that last line, our way. It's not your way. It's not my way. It's our way. You're collaborating. Collab Co-laboring. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay? Co-laboring. Collaborating. So now we're going to show you a bit of a film. We might need this mic. It's on. Oh, you? Yeah. Hey, Daddy. Yeah. I got that report card. I need all A's except for one C. Well, it's got a notification that you moved $5,000 from our savings into your checking account. Now, whether or not this you can follow your sister again. You just gave that much money to your family last month. And my mm. sister needs it more than your parents do. My parents are elderly. Okay, your sister married a father. I'm not supporting someone who's too late to work. Darren is not a bum. He's just having a hard time finding a job. Liz, he is a bum. 
I can't even remember the last time he had a job. Can we talk about this later? No, we'll talk about it now. Because if you want to give them what you make, that's fine. But you're not giving them my money. Your money? Mm. The last time I checked, we both put money into that account. And the last time I checked, I make four times what you do. Mm. So you don't want a cent out of that account without asking me first. Mm. Can we please just eat dinner? <laughs> No, go ahead. Go to the gym. Now, what we want to talk about, go to that next slide, is what styles did you see the so let's let's see the first question. What conflict styles were evident here? My way or the highway. My way or the highway, okay. Avoid it. She tried avoiding it. He was standing your ground. She she tried to give him in. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you said was there any any kind of collaborating? No. Yeah. In the back. child was completely ignored. Her needs were not met. So, oh, list them all. We just had them there. Yeah. She, no, she tried avoiding the conflict. He had to stand in your ground and there was no compromise that I could see. Okay? And no collaboration. So let's look at these styles again together. Instead of doing a small group, we're just going to do this together. Let's go to the first one. So here's the thing. You know what conflict avoiding is. Why would you avoid a conflict? And is there a situation that yeah. when it should be used? When should you avoid a conflict? Okay, so what? why would you avoid a conflict? Number one, they should have avoided that conflict right there because they're tired. Okay, so if, if you're in a room and there's an issue that comes up and the children are there, you might say, we'll table this. We'll avoid the conflict for now. Okay. Now, is there a time when your children should see how conflict functions and how it operates? So they can know how to handle it when they become adults. Okay. Is that not the right word? Okay, so, so, so there are times when you should avoid the conflict. Let me ask you. Yes. So suppose you are in a dangerous yes. I think you know that because of quiet, quiet conflict of order. Uh -huh. I, I think the most important part of it, it shouldn't have been a conflict to start with. Mm -hmm. They both should have they should she they should have should have uh, addressed this issue Out before, before there was a exactly. conflict, before exactly. it happened. Exactly. And she should she shouldn't have went and got money. Uh -huh. <laughs> exactly. That's right. And he should never have done it before with his family. Mm -hmm. So it, they, it should have been a really conflict to start with because they should have discussed it together first right. before it was even done. Okay. So some things then require that the family have a regular meeting time exactly. that they would spend time dealing with certain matters like that. Now, I think that that's, that's all important. Mm -hmm. Very important. Yes. yes there's, there's a hand. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a hand. There's two hands. Hand. Yeah. One, two, if you don't mind. Yes, ma'am. First of all, they should do this. Talk to the Lord about whatever is on their mind before they even work to each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, we couldn't hear you totally. Could you just lift it? There you are. <laughs> before they even work something up. Sometimes you want to care. You do. You have a separate bedroom. Yeah, I'm like that. 
But so how to, yeah. your, your question is, suppose you do see a need, uh -huh. how might you handle that? Uh -huh. And so um, let me respond to that question. Uh -huh. um, I think it was stated earlier, if there's a, uh, th there should be a family policy oh, no. on, uh, on how much money you can give away, and, so and, and you should consult with each other. And, and, and if there's not agreement, we'll talk about later on with solutions, but okay. it might be compromise, it might be collaboration. Okay. I do believe there are times when we should avoid conflict. Okay. Um, I think if somebody was coming towards me with a gun, and they, back to our guns again, and they were saying, you gotta do so and so and so and so, I would agree with them. I wouldn't, I would, I would avoid the conflict. And actually, I might even give in because, you know, they have a gun. You know what I'm saying? In the back. And when there is a crisis in the family, yeah. you say there's a crisis, then you need to talk about that yeah. in another way. Yeah. yeah, and they probably in that situation both should have talked about that. Go on, right here. Something strange is happening in our church today. Something <coughs> that shames us before God, unless a change is made. Some years ago, a uh, member of a church in St. Louis brought one, a new member from his church to my church mm -hmm. about 40 miles away. Mm -hmm. That man came in a dress. Mm -hmm. And when he came through the door, he went straight to the ladies' bathroom. And they came to the ladies were so shocked. They came to me, mm -hmm. wondering what I can do. Mm -hmm to get that man out of the battle. Mm. And it was very difficult mm. to get him to mm. leave. Now, it seems as though in many of our churches, the leaders don't know how to address mm. a situation like that. Mm -hmm. And so, I got the impression that homosexuality is becoming somewhat popular. Yeah. in our churches today mm -hmm. and many people are afraid to deal with it. Apparently some pastors think if they deal with it they're fired. Mm -hmm. so, so that seemed to be related to that earlier question. Mm -hmm. And so is that a conflict that you want to avoid? Because it's a moral issue for our church I don't think you should avoid it. No. So I think you're absolutely correct. This is not a time to avoid. And if we go to the next one, nor is it a time to give in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to add quickly, mm -hmm. a young lady who is a homosexual mm -hmm. went to Oakwood mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. And she said to her aunt, I see lots of, uh, you say homosexual young ladies? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. At Oakwood, she says that she would sit there and just pick out mm -hmm. these ladies who are lesbians. And so she said she was not impressed mm -hmm. in becoming a member of Oakwood because of what is happening there. Mm -hmm. So I am I don't know whether or not the leaders are afraid or whether or not they're doing something about it. But it seems to me as though many leaders today in our churches and schools are afraid to deal with situations mm -hmm. because they may not want to lose their job, but they should be mainly concerned about their standing in heaven. So, so here is what I'm thinking about. How do we deal with, because this is what we're raising up, you want me to talk? How do we deal with difficult circumstances, okay? 
And you can say that it can happen in the church. It can even happen here at Trinity. Mm -hmm. and, and this is why the pastor is really asking for us to take care of a very important issue. How do we manage conflict? How do we manage things that's very sensitive? 10% mm -hmm. of the population, by the way, is homosexual or lesbian, gay. And trans, I'm not sure you how that trans LGBTQ. So question. I don't know that that's 10%, though. I think we said. No, I think it is. But the, actually, it's 4% and then something else. OK. All right. So you have, you have them within your society. Your society is going to be manifested in your church. You can keep that, just keep that in mind. Uh, and so they're going to come to our campus. How do we deal? How do, and I see, I have, I, I teach ethics, my class. And so I say that there are people that you, that you have to, you, that you live with, how do you manage them? Manage yourself, how you manage your lifestyle, okay? And this is where it gets very difficult because that homosexual, mm -hmm. that gay person, Need salvation. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Okay, so how do we deal? That's, that's that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about ostracizing, but we are talking about how do we manage the situation that we're confronted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see some hands. I see two hands back there. Yes. Which I, I could. Okay, go on, Pastor, One, and then we'll come. Two, three. <laughs> Speak of our <clears throat> We have to separate ourselves. Just like Lot separated himself. You know, so you know, we're not saying that we're going to condemn the person. Mm -hmm. But here is the position that God has taken. And so I must follow him. So I can't have you come and enjoy yourself in my living room, mm -hmm. knowing that what you're doing is sin. Mm -hmm. Knowing what you're doing, God condemns. Mm -hmm. Not that come on anyway. No, 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 because I'm becoming partaker of your sins. Well, let, let, let's, let's, let's touch on that. We are talking about a person coming, let's say you say coming into your home. Do we have, the, being, a, being and doing is two different things. Being one who is classified as as lesbian, gay, or homosexual, does not necessarily, if they are, born that way. No, no, we're not talking about being born. No, no, I want you to think of just follow it. If there, if there is a possibility that they are, let me just throw out, throw out a Bible issue. Not necessarily born, Christ said some are born as you, right? What do we mean by that? Now we're talking theological. Mm -hmm. What do we mean? See, I, I go right to the pastor and say, well, what do we mean theologically about that? When, if even if it's nurture or nature, is my, my ethical thing here, even if it's nature or nurture, mm -hmm. we just said this morning, sin is in the world. Yes. Okay? What do we do? <laughs> let me look. Let me get a story that I listened to this week. I, I listen to my Bible every day. Why did Jesus touch the leper? You know that they were not supposed. He was, and by their societal issues, we're not supposed to touch the leper. Jesus, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Jesus touched the left. No, he didn't. Do we avoid people? No. Okay. So, so I, I'm saying that, if, and I'm going back to your illustration, when they come in your house, how do you treat them? Mm -hmm. I have to deal with 
motivos que às vezes tem motivos mais ou menos. Agora, mas só. Ok. I know our children can be. Yeah, and I, and I love her, but I cannot participate. I cannot show that I agree with you. I think you you can you can definitely not agree. But how do you accept her? You can accept her. Okay. You can accept her. I accept her, but at the same time. I just not accept her lifestyle. You're, course, I agree. We're, we're all that's saying the same thing. And that point, we're not saying accept. And, and, and in reference to conflict, and I do see your hand here, and I see your hand here. I think uh, this is not an example of giving in. This is an example of recognizing everyone's inherent worth as humans, and that they have dignity and respect and, and value them. So a couple of months ago, our church did a memorial service for all the people who had died and we couldn't do the funerals in church and you know. And one of our church members who died, her daughter is uh, married to a woman. Mm -hmm. And so they came. Mm -hmm. Now, the pastor didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. I do it because the lady had told me before she died. Mm -hmm. But she still loved her daughter. Mm -hmm. She still talked to her daughter, mm -hmm. and her daughter and spouse came to church. Mm -hmm. And when it came time to introduce them, mm -hmm. as they came up, I said, so and so and her partner are going to recognize so you know, our member mm -hmm. of our church. I don't think I was condoning it, mm -hmm. but I wasn't going to say, so and so can come, but we don't believe in this. And so her spouse can't come. I, I just didn't think that was kind. Mm -hmm. So they both came up and recognized the deceased person. And they even bought, I think the spouse has a daughter. They even bought the daughter. Mm -hmm. Now, all of this is not totally related to conflict resolution, but it's a good issue to talk about how do we love people who are different? Who are not, oh, oh, and who may even, I mean, I mean, to me, when you go back and look at sins, sin, it's, the Bible lists a number of sins. Mm -hmm. So there are people who are adulterers, mm -hmm. and I still am kind to them. That's just what I think God wants yeah. us to do. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if that responds to what you're saying, but that's kind of my response. Now, who is two? This is two. You're three, and you'll be four. You were three. Yeah. Oh, we already have a three, so you have to be four. And then you can be five. Remember your number, because you can clearly see how it Okay, two. Um, from what you were saying, how do you handle it? I think first thing we need to do is approach God first. Mm -hmm. And ask him to give us the words and the wisdom as to how to handle it. Amen. Because if you go within yourself, you might say something that is contrary to what God would have you to do. So you go to God, you pray about it, you talk to him. And you go to your loved one or whoever it is and say, listen, um, I love you and I just want you to know you know what the, show them what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And then once you show them what the Bible says, I said, you know, this is not acceptable or whatever. But at the same time, you cannot shun that person, you cannot condone them. It's not that you agree with their lifestyle as was said before, you, uh, but you're letting them know this is not a God. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you will still meet with them at family occasion or whatever it is. Still have to show love because at the end of the day, by you showing them that love, that might change their mind. Amen. Amen. Three. I had an incident that happened to me and I was not ready for it at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, at all. And um, we're going to have those too, by the way. Really quickly, yes. Really quickly, I had an incident that happened where there was a young man. He was so fine. And he came uh, to me. All the girls, everybody in the place was looking at the young man. And um, he came up to me. I did not know him from a can of paint. I was working at the nursing home. Mm -hmm. And he came into the room where I was and asked me, mm -hmm. could I take a lunch break with him? And I said, well, do you smoke cigarettes? And he said, yes. I said, I'm allergic to the smell. Can you not smoke? 
He said, because I was really, really need to talk to you. Mm-hmm. I didn't know the young man, and I was asking him, I was like, you sure you want to talk to me? He said, I really, really need to talk to you. He uh, asked me, first of all, he said, are you a Christian? Mm-hmm. And I looked at him, I said, yeah. And so we went outside for the lunch break and everything, and uh, he began to share with me mm-hmm. uh, that God had asked him to come and talk to me. Mm-hmm. And I said, are you sure? You know, I kept asking, is he sure? And I said, okay, all right, yeah. And so he told me that he was, you know, the way he was and everything. And that he was, he was gay. Me. Yeah. Okay. And that he told me that his, told me that his father was a, a pastor mm-hmm. of a large church. And his mother knew he was that way. He had been that way ever since he felt that he was that way ever since he was young. Mm-hmm. And uh, he felt that he was born that way. Mm-hmm. And he said that his, that his mom knew, but his dad didn't know because he knew his dad, it would crush him. And that he would, it would crush him and kill him if his father mm-hmm. would not accept him. And he knew his father, his stand that his father took on that. Mm-hmm. And he knew his father wouldn't accept him. Mm-hmm. And he loved his father very dearly. Mm-hmm. And he was trying to ask me, how did you deal with that? And um, first of all, I didn't even know how to, to deal with it because I wasn't ready for it or mm-hmm. nothing. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, first of all, I said, can you pray with me? And so he did, we prayed. And I was praying, asking God, help me. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, help me, because I don't even know what to say, mm-hmm. how to deal with this, and why did he ask me about this? <laughs> and uh, so when the incident happened, I, I just talked to him and I shared with him Jesus' love. Mm-hmm. And I sh- told him, I said, first of all, I said, I just showed him the word of God and I just told him, I said, God made you when he made you. I said, is your insides female? Are you born female inside? Mm-hmm. And you know, the outsides have something else? Mm-hmm. Are you born with the, some other DNA or something? He said, no, I have everything, I'm a male. Mm-hmm. And I told him, I said, first of all, I said, God made you a male. I said, this is, and that's who you are. And I said, God made me a woman, and that's who I am. And I just told him, I said, um, I said, first of all, you know, the devil tries to get in our heads and tries to twist our thoughts to make us think that we're something that we're not. Mm-hmm. And I said, do you believe that? And he said, Time, you know, because mm-hmm. I think I, when I was talking to him, he got confused because mm-hmm. he was he never heard a Christian talk to him that way. Mm-hmm. And I said, he said that he has other people and stuff that hate him because of what mm-hmm. you do. And I said, first of all, they're not Christians if they hate you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I said, because God does not hate anybody. God is love. Mm-hmm. And I told him, I said, we all have sins that we do. And sins that we commit, but does not make us make it us. Mm-hmm. And I said sometimes that twists our head. Mm-hmm. And I just told him to go back and study the word. Mm-hmm. And I told him I said that you know his father, if he explains it to his father, his father would you know mm-hmm. would probably accept him. He said he and you know he went back and he talked to his father. His father accepted him, but he also thought about what I told him. And he called me one day, he had, he quit the job, and I hadn't seen him in a while, he called me, he was on a flight. I'm being quick and kind of leaving some things out mm-hmm. because I'm a track of time. But it was a young lady that liked him. Mm-hmm. And uh, she knew he, his thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, he left that other man. Mm-hmm. Called me from the airport telling me he was getting ready to go and try to make it work with this other female. Mm-hmm. Because of uh, the way I explained it exactly. Mm-hmm. And how and I told him I said, Jesus loves you no matter what your decision is, but you cannot go to heaven that way. I said, We all you won't be able to go to heaven that way. Mm-hmm. You know, and I said, if you really want to go to heaven and you really love Christ, we have to do what Christ wants us to do, not what we want to do. That's right. And sin is sin. And what we realize is that we don't understand it all. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, we don't understand it all, and I'm not. I don't want us to think we're trying to condone. I don't want to condemn, yeah. mm-hmm. but we don't understand it. Right, mm-hmm. and I was going to say for those who have relatives who may be struggling with this issue, mm-hmm. a book that 
we read is called Gay Girl, Good God. The author is Jackie Hill Perry. She's like almost a, a Christian evangelist. And she talks about that was her lifestyle and how God brought her up. And I think that's important for people. So, so if we're going to help people, we have to give them some answers. Mm -hmm. And we can't give them answers if we condemn them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Four. Okay. I'm sorry, you're about seven. Four. seven. No, she was four. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, four. Yeah, I'll be quick. Um, you know, our uh, relationship with Christ is the basis of everything that we mm -hmm. say, do, think, dream, whatever goes mm -hmm. Our relationship with him is the length of our leash. If the further we get from Christ, the longer our leash. The shorter the leash, the closer we are to Christ. And he is going, he's always going to be the foundation. So he's always going to lead us in the way that we should go, in the way that we should respond, in the way that we speak, in the way that we look, in the way that we relate to other people. So when we are coming into these issues, believe it, we are going to if, if we believe in him, we're going to stick to his character traits. Character is always <clears throat> revealed in the time of a crisis. Mm -hmm. And so how we are is how we're going to relate to people. And I just believe if we continue to hang with the master, mm -hmm. whatever our response is to anyone, it's always going to be on the basis of how Christ would do it. Yeah, and how he says it. Yeah. And yes. All right? Mm -hmm. Can you do this? Somebody else said they were five? I had two no, more. Five. Oh, she's five. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll listen. Don't tell me I'm wrong again. Five, and this is six, and this is seven. All okay. right? Cool. All right. Thank you. Um, can everyone hear me? Hey. Yeah, we can hear you.
And the thing is, again, God is doing things that we know nothing about. Mm-hmm. He's seeing and he's interacting with them in a portion of their lives. Mm-hmm. But God is doing so much. Mm-hmm. And he knows who the jewels are. Mm-hmm. Right? And the thing is, sometimes you're, you're going to be like, well, why are we having all these interactions? Because God is saying, I can trust you with this interaction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God is love. Amen. Okay, you. Six, I don't know how to handle conflict. Mm-hmm. When I don't stand my ground and die to sex sin. When I stand my ground, we have a big argument. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited to yeah. learn see, about it. Yeah, yeah, because see, it deals with me <laughs> mentally. Yeah. I don't know how to deal with well, see, there, So what we have been saying so far, okay, there are some occasions where you give in. So I'll give you a personal example. That's why people like us. So I said to my <laughs> husband yesterday, I said, baby, what should we work? And I said, why? no, he said that. And I said, why don't we wear X? He says, he got silent. Silence usually means no. <laughs> <laughs> then he said, then he said. Oh, it means I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> He's supposed to say I'm thinking. That, that, then I'll know what that means. <laughs> then he says, well, what about if we wore blue? You have something blue. So I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I have something blue. Not my favorite. This is not my favorite. So I gave in. This is not what I wanted to wear. I had something else I wanted to wear. But, it, but why did I give in? It really didn't matter. You didn't know that's not what I wanted to wear. It wasn't a big deal. So I think you can give in on issues that are not a big deal. So that, use this as a rule of thumb. Now, if my husband came, and he would never do this, and said, let's go out to a bar and drink, mm-hmm. I would stand my ground. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You see, that's a moral it's a issue. Moral. Mm-hmm. It's a moral issue. And, and let me give you two biblical examples where they didn't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, Isaac and Rebecca. Mm-hmm. No. Abraham and Sarah. That's what I want to do. Abraham and Sarah. Sarah said to him, I'm not having any children. Mm-hmm. Tell you what I'm gonna, I yeah. suggest. Why don't you get Hagar? Mm-hmm. And he eagerly agreed. He eagerly agreed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if he, I don't know if he eagerly agreed, but he, he did agree. Okay? Yeah. He didn't he gave in. He gave in. He gave in. Okay. Yeah. He, he gave in. Yeah. Not a good time to give. You see what I'm saying? So there are times when it's not a good idea to give in. You see what I mean? Because that was a time to stand your ground. No, God said that you and I would do this. You see what I'm saying? So that was a time to stand your ground. And so what you have to decide is what's the, what's the basis of this issue? Is this a moral issue? Or this of preference. Okay? A g- good example. <laughs> and I also laugh at this. We've been married about 30 years. Mm-hmm. Because you know it's over 50 now. Mm-hmm. And my husband seriously came to me and he said, Why do we eat broccoli all the time? I said, Because we love broccoli. Uh-huh. He said, I don't. Oh. <laughs> We've been eating broccoli for 30 years. Oh, I promise you. <laughs> and I guess he had been giving in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And when you get to a certain age, you don't have to give in. I am not eating broccoli. No more broccoli. I'm not eating broccoli. Now, I don't care if you don't eat broccoli. What we do, and I'll tell you the truth, some days I will have broccoli and he has cauliflower. This is gonna, and that's what? A compromise. You see what I mean? I love broccoli still. And I'm not, not going to eat broccoli. But it's not a moral issue. So, so, the, so, so in the conflict resolution, stand your ground should be used very infrequently. Mm-hmm. And it should be on moral issues, not on preferences. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, something that you know God wants you to do. Mm-hmm. Because when I avoid it, I come back with a vengeance. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what my husband was saying. And, and it's not totally true. Um, boy, uh, boy, no, get, I gave in today. I really didn't care, <coughs> you know. On the other hand, in the in the uh, being again transparent, two weeks ago we had graduation mm-hmm. at Oakwood, and I said, "Baby, let's put on our regalia, you know, the cap and gown, mm-hmm. so we can get better seats." 
I'm being honest, tell it to me, shame the devil. And, like, and he was like, no, I don't want to wear them. I said, then we're going to have to go early. He said, no, I don't want to go early. I said, then we're going to be in the nosebleed section. We were in the nosebleed section. So now next year, seriously, I've already told my, made up my mind, if we go to the graduation, I'm going to wear my regalia. He can, he can go open those little no sections. Uh -huh. I'll wear mine. Uh -huh. You see, uh, once again, we will have compromised. Uh -huh. And again, it's not a moral issue. Mm -hmm. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but that was what he wanted. I gave in because, you know, we were all going together. And we were going together. So you see, so so I did. I, I didn't mind it except when we went to the nosebleed section. Mm -hmm. Way up there, the students are texting me, where are you? Oh, this is a class I really liked. I would have liked to have been down there to touch them. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So that was a time when I should have <laughs> not used, I don't think I should have said, no, we have to do this. I didn't think it was a stand your ground, but it would have been a compromise. I should have compromised, which is, I'm going to wear my regalia. You don't have to wear yours. I'm just going to wear a regalia. If you see me next year with regalia, or when you'll know it's because I just want a better seat. <laughs> That's the only reason you get great seats with your regalia. Okay? <laughs> Does that make sense to you? Keep, a, keep okay. in mind, I have been up front for the last 15, 20 years. Yeah, he has. Oh yeah, because he helps with the graduation. I was helping, I was on the graduation committee. Right there, you would always see my picture up there, you know. Yeah, and I, I wasn't. So. I wasn't feeling it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yes, sir. I retired. <laughs> yeah, we are both retired, but I want better seats. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to comment on the, the conversation we've had before about homosexualism and all the social mm -hmm. in the church. And me and my wife, we often talk about this a lot because we do know people that are that way. And the only thing I think that God has revealed to me, me personally, is that we have to be careful that we don't put certain sins in the category. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, thinking that this sin is worse than all. Yeah. That's, right. That's right. And I think we do people a disservice when we look at people and say, oh, he's a homosexual. Right. I'll just shame himself. Right. You yeah. won't allow a homosexual in the church, but you'll let a thief in. There you go. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 And so we have to be very careful that we don't do things That's like right. that. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we need to, well, whatever we need, we do need to do with love. I saw yeah. your hand earlier. I didn't ignore you. I just saw your hand earlier. Was that the end of your point, yeah. sir? Thank you. Did you? Yes. I had a situation when I was principal of St. Louis. Um, we had a young man that wanted to work at the school. He was obviously homosexual, but he wasn't practicing. I didn't know if he was or not. Right. But I had to have that conversation with him, letting him know that I had no problem with him working. There was something he could do and do well. Mm -hmm. But I let him know that this is going to be a very sticky situation. You're working with children, around children. Mm -hmm. You can't, uh, you have to carry yourself in a way mm -hmm. that you may not want to. And also, uh, and he let me know right away. He said, you know, his grandmother raised him and used to dress him like a girl because she wanted to go. Oh, no, Bob. He did not get off into that lifestyle, but when he came into church, he let it go. Okay. Mm -hmm. But he never married and he didn't mm -hmm. want to. But at the same time, he wanted to be saved and he wanted to live mm -hmm. a, the right life. Mm -hmm. And I said, fine, then you can work. Mm -hmm. And just, um, and he did fabulously. My kids remember him to the day. <coughs> but he did a good job and there was no problem, no issues with the parents or anything. Upheld. The church holds a difference between practice and, and yeah, that's yeah. being and doing. That's so, 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 this is we, so everyone understands compromise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are some things. It's not a moral issue, but you said, well, you know, we can compromise on this. Mm -hmm. We can, okay, but but if it would be great if we could collaborate, mm -hmm. and this is the final. And we're not saying you can always collaborate, but that you sit down and say, you know, let's take the graduation situation. If we were to really collaborate and talk about it, we might come up with a creative way that would be, you know, <laughs> actually stay home and watch it on TV. But um, you know, you know, you, you see what I'm saying? And that's way. It's not my way. It's not your way. We talk about something. We we thought about it and talked to each other about it. But collaboration. The reason we don't collaborate. You know why we don't collaborate? It's more work. We have to talk. You can't just yeah. have one conversation. 
You might have to, talk, you know, uh, when it comes to finances in our budget, early in our marriage, we had a lot of problems with that. Mm -hmm. And we did this and we did that. And eventually we came up with something that was collaborative. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we also, you know, I, I, I tell people, I guess you, you think that I'm the one that has all the problems. That's not true. But I tell people, <laughs> I tell people that, um, <laughs> I tell people that my husband is all used to be very uncomfortable when I'm driving. I just want you to know I've had my license for many years, but he is a little uncomfortable when I drive, and so that was often a source of discord in our family because he would be you know, making a lot of noise when I'm driving. <laughs> then I get out the car and say, you drive. It was just, it was a little messy. Yeah. But we, 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 I would say we took us, we talked about this off and on for years mm -hmm. and we came up with a system. Okay. Mm -hmm. We really did. Mm -hmm. And on long trips, mm -hmm. people often want to know what the system, on long trips, he does the bulk of the driving, but after so many hours, I drive because then he starts driving the way he thinks I drive. And so therefore, we have worked, you see what I mean? We talked to each other, we worked at the, but we didn't come up with a solution just like that. It took us a long time of talking back and forth, mm -hmm. back and forth. And I have to uh, commend him. Mm -hmm. When I'm driving, he now reads or does something to take his mind yeah. off of my <laughs> You can't look at the road. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just completely closes it out, and I'm happy. And pray. <laughs> I'm happy and he's happy. You see what I'm saying? So we worked something out, but it didn't happen right away. And that's what I think we don't realize. Even though we love the Lord and even though we pray, we don't always come up with a, a solution right away. We have to keep talking. Come let us reason together. And that's what we've done. So when we talk about collaboration, we're really talking about being co-laborers. And in churches, we have to be co-laborers. Right. And there are some people that do things differently. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that it's wrong. Right. It's different. It's different. Mm -hmm. And we, we, gotta, we gotta wrestle with that. Whether, if they do it differently, and it's not necessarily wrong, can we comport to that? Can we accept that? You know, and that's the difficult thing that we're, you know, my way, the highway kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But people who have unique skills in the church will do things differently mm. and will be successful yes. with it. Yes, mm -hmm. that's the truth. That is the truth. What about one, one yes. question? Yes. When you showed us the uh, film about the marriage couple, and yeah. one of them was saying, I gave my relative $5,000. Yeah. Without even collaborating with the other, no, yes. is that something that that you think that couple did no, wrong, no, no, or that's that something that, they're doing different? No, that that's, that's one, no, yeah. We we do not condone that. And when we right. have more time okay. than just to discuss the film, we talk about what everyone did wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And let me just quickly go through all the things that went wrong mm -hmm. in that in that mm -hmm. scenario, because that's a great question. Mm -hmm. Number one, he came right in fussing. Mm -hmm. Sure did. Wrong Inappropriate. Thing. Wrong place. Wrong time. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Honey, is it, can I talk to you about something that has to do with the money? And she mm -hmm. says, no, let's eat dinner, and then we'll do it afterwards. That's the first thing he did wrong. Okay. The second thing is then he kind of accused her. Mm -hmm. You know, you did this and that and the other. Mm -hmm. Now, what she did wrong is, I, I think the family should have um, a guidelines where no, nobody, not you, not me, not the little child, nobody can move money unless it's well, understood. Mm -hmm. It's and what level of money we're moving yeah. 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 What's the minimum that you can spend independently? Mm -hmm. So that's all, and you don't make that rule while you're trying to cook food and everybody's yelling. There you go. You make that rule before the storm. Yeah. So, so that's another example. And then, ignore, uh, when it got to that level, they should not have had that level of disagreement in front of the child. You know, I think that's why she right. looked at the child and said, yeah. can we discuss this right. later? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, we're going to discuss this now. Mm -hmm. Inappropriate. Mm -hmm. Next thing, it was my money and your money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Inappropriate. Mm -hmm. It's our money, right. and let's talk about our money at another time. And it's not because he's making more. <laughs> no, no. When we marry, it's our money. It's our money. Mm -hmm. 
Right. You know, when we when we come together, it's ours. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we do that division? How do we? And we will find that in, in marriages, sometimes one partner may be make more right. than the other. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's it's something that we're in this thing together. Yes. How do we work it out? How do we collaborate? And how could, do we talk about how we're going to do this? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, he, said he had his hand up for me. Okay, one, two, three, four. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. yeah. That sounds good? Okay. Yeah. One. And uh, you said you, I heard you say, you know, uh, the, that, the, that, a, that the one part of that wrong in the conflict when it, when it said, when it's your money and my money. Mm -hmm. Well, that's everything everything should be should be our money mm -hmm. but should should in even in this situation with where it's our money that one have money and the other one don't or should we both have some money yeah. okay so 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 what you are what you are sort of hinting at and and, and when we do premarital counseling i will give you the guidelines that we give to pre couple uh, and yeah, pre finance. We, finance. Do we do one finance. whole session just on finances because it's such a big issue we suggest to couples that's what we suggest that they have a joint account which is what we have and we and our research says a joint account is better so and then but we also suggest that each couple each person, person. Uh, have their own separate account. That's their own private money. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs private money. Mm -hmm. If I want to get my hair done, I shouldn't have to come back and beg and plead, can I get my hair? Well, I don't have any hair. So let me see. Let me try this. If I want to get my nails done, I, right. um, I should, if I want to get a massage, it, it should, you know, and we, we give allowance. He has allowance, I have allowance, and from the allowance, I just, that's, what I, that's my own private money. The other thing we have, as we've alluded to, is we have a limit. I can't spend over a certain amount. If I'm gonna spend, and it's lower than a thousand, but if I'm gonna spend a thousand dollars, I just can't say, well, I wanna spend that, you know? No, it's our money, and if it gets to that limit, then I have to go back to that. You're gonna have to be five, sorry. Okay, does that answer your question? That, 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 answer, that, that answers my question. I'm just, just, just throwing out the question. Mm -hmm. But then, and, and uh, the other part was in conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, 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 has, it has to get to a certain point, doesn't it, before it become a conflict? Because sometimes the early part of that thing could just be a misunderstanding. I yeah. think it could be. Mm -hmm. and, and and let me just suggest that you, it would be wise to solve it at the misunderstanding mm -hmm. before it gets to a conflict. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, two. I don't know who two is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, it, it sounds like uh, what we're dealing with as part of the Now, how do you deal with parties that are not investing? There are possibly external factors influencing the church, uh, you know, the home. Um, how do you deal with um, conflict? Approaching, yes, approaching conflict in different environments? Are you saying? Well, what I'm saying is, it sounds like you know you're able to resolve conflict more when parties are invested, invested and are moving forward as a church, moving oh, forward okay. as a home. But what happens if one person is moving forward, the other person is going, you know, counter? Well, oh, that can happen in your church too. Right. Well, th th yes, yeah. that's what I'm saying. So, how do you deal with that? Because you know, if yeah. that happens, and you just have an antagonist yeah. in your church and in your home, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> what do you do? We 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 had to deal with churches uh, that did have, and they were far apart. Oh, and the people who had the money had were on one so side. That's a of case example. We have a case example with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, did in, you have a case example? Yeah, we do have a case yeah, example. Yeah, we have a case it's case. Coming. Uh, in a in a nutshell, I would still use the same rule I shared earlier, so that you are uh, having a discussion. The person is not invested. Is it a, is is this a moral issue or is this an issue where you say, well, whatever. And, and that makes a difference. But if the person's not invested and it is a moral issue, then you still have to 
stand your ground. Does that make sense? And I'm not, is that, yeah. It's a, uh, You're still five. I'm sorry, sweetie. <laughs> I'm sorry. If I go out of order, it'll mess me up. Oh yeah. And in, in doing that, and sometimes standing your ground means falling on your knees and really, really mm -hmm. pressing in and taking it to God and telling mm -hmm. I would only say that if we were to get further down, all of that is in the, the in the workshop. So okay. yes. Mm -hmm. Three. Well, yes. I'm probably asking the same question, um, kind of kind of pointing what uh, Brother Cardinal was saying. How do you deal with somebody that uh, when I when I was married? Uh, my spouse did not want um, to have joint accounts. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. just wanted us to have separate accounts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, that, that, and that is one model that couples yeah. use. Now, we, this is what we recommend. We just talked about the ideal, ideal. and the research yeah. Yeah. theory that uh, there are people that. I didn't want that. Yeah, yeah. and there are people, for example, one of the pieces that we didn't bring into it is that people have loans, student loans, or stuff like that that was their own before, and sometimes they don't. What we are talking about is an ideal marital situation that's effective. Do we want it to work? Okay? And that's what we have to raise. Do we want to be successful in this process? And it's a, it's a real willingness to give of ourselves and our means and our resources. Yeah. That, that's this. This is hard. We had to come to grips with that. Did you not want to take that? Yeah, I I, I want to get to four and five, right. and then I'd like to, and six, but I really also want to finish. So I don't know how to do this. Okay. Well, Can we finish well, and come? Hands. Hold the question. Take, the, take the two hands. Relax. No, that was a four. Was there... You're four. Okay, and she's then, four and he's five. And five. And then if you don't yeah. mind. I think some of your questions might be answered if we yeah. get to the end. Well, okay. well, I was just looking at the situation what happened on the on, on, on the clip. The clip. Uh -huh. <laughs> so when they when the young man came in mm -hmm. to talk mm -hmm. to his wife, he was upset, and it goes back on what you said, facial experience, mm -hmm. you know, facial. Mm -hmm. He was given all of the above, mm -hmm. and it seemed mm -hmm. to me it wasn't just about the money. That's right. I right. read into his because you know we can speak. Right. You're yeah. right. And we it was, was wrong. It, it's right. a great idea to see yeah. this movie. Yeah. yeah. Totally. I saw the movie. Yeah. Okay. And uh, <laughs> but anyway, he was he was dealing with his stuff other than exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No, yeah. with exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah, I just that's a good point. Five. Yeah. And then we're gonna go on to this. Okay, see, when, when you have an allowance, mm -hmm. which we have an allowance, yeah. whatever I do not with my business. allowance is, 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 my, is, my, is my business. It's not a not yeah. yeah. vote. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to say it nicely. Yeah. Um, we don't actually discuss what, because that's like, we have our money. Yeah, which is then, the total to keep the family going, mm -hmm. secure, etc. And then this money that I use, and 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 frankly, you know, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't run around, I cook. I like to have my nails look nice. I just think that's I don't think that's a bad thing. So that's what I do. So yeah. So so that's how we do that. All right. So let's go to this. Here are some unhealthy responses, and we've already said that. Look, it's unhealthy when you don't recognize what's important. You see, what I, that's what we're talking about. Then explosive angry reactions. Mm -hmm. The withdrawal of love resulting in rejection, isolation, shaming, and fear of abandonment. Yep. The expectation of bad outcomes. And I just want to support that third one real quickly. We have pastor churches where if someone's child marries someone that they don't like, mm -hmm. then they say, well, I'm not going to the wedding. Mm -hmm. See, that's abandonment and withdrawal of love. You've already told them, I don't think this is a good idea. They heard you. They're not deaf. Mm -hmm. And, and they still don't get married. Mm -hmm. So I go to the wedding. <laughs> That's what I do. 
I mean, I can honestly say that every one of my children married. I wasn't 100% happy, but they're still married 21 years later. 21 years later, you know? All right. Here's, a, here's some healthy responses. The capacity to recognize and respond to important matters. Important matters. We've had couples fight over how you fold a towel. <laughs> important matters. A readiness to forgive and forget. Do you want to raise that up now? Or do you, want to... you can slay down. Okay. Okay. The ability to speak, to seek compromise, and avoid punishing. Those are the important. Hmm? Both of those are important. Both of those are important? No punishment and forget. Oh, okay. Both of those are, yes. Yeah. yeah. The threat is to forgive and forget. And to forget. Yeah. Yes. The so ability to seek compromise and avoid punishing, a belief that resolution can support the interests and need of both, both parties. parties. Yes. So we're not going to be able to do the case example because our time is gone. Let's slip through that one. But that would have been our case example. We would have talked about it. But I think we've done a lot of talking with each other. So I hope this is going to be okay. Keep going, baby. Keep going. Oh, you don't want that. That's uh -oh. part of the let's, let's talk about guidelines, which is what I think people are asking for. Okay, there you are. Pray before you approach the person. Yeah. Yes. And here's mm -hmm. here's what we suggest. First, you pray for yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. That God will give you the word. Yes. Mm -hmm. Second, you pray for a good time. Yes. And this happens in marriages too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, if those that, that, that couple that we had, they had prayed about. It. And then recognize that there were things coming up. I think you would have seen a different reaction. Recognize your part. Mm. Here's what I find. People always can tell you what the other person's doing wrong. Mm. What are you doing wrong? Mm. Before you go into the conflict, don't ask what is she or he or whoever doing wrong. What am I doing wrong? Right. What do I need to change? Right. That's part of your prayer. Yes. Understand the nature of our of other culture and their underpinnings. Mm -hmm. We're different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are different people. Mm -hmm. We come out of different homes. Mm -hmm. How we respond. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we may not like our spouse's uh, way that he, but that's how he was raised and how she was raised. Mm -hmm. So how do we negotiate that? How do we work it out? Yeah. Our first big argument, again, transparency, very big argument, the first one, was over corn pudding. Mm. Cool. He said I yes, he said I fixed it too much and he didn't want any more. He was tired of it. And I said, well, we have to eat rice and peas all the time, and it just went from there. Uh, <laughs> Can you imagine you spend a lot of time arguing about corn pudding and rice and peas? And corn pudding is southern. And rice and peas is what? Caribbean, Caribbean. Caribbean island. Caribbean. So you see, differences in diet. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is, understand the nature of that, and then recognize what's important. Mm -hmm. Well, guidelines for conflict. Make this relationship, our relationship, i.e. the church, the important thing. The most important thing is the relationship. We want to maintain a relationship. The most important thing. We have differences of how we do things. Mm -hmm. But you towels know. and corn pudding? No, I'm yeah. not going to do it. And, and the towel issue. We think, you know, when you think you a, a towel folded on a rack does not help you, uh, or does you cannot utilize it on the rack, folded that way. Mm -hmm. You have to unfold a towel to make it use of it. <laughs> Right? All right. <laughs> We've been married for 30 something years, and we got a 35 year old. Mm -hmm. And that is our biggest conflict. Mm -hmm. You know, when I say that, Mama, I need this, I give. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell him later. <laughs> so when you say about the towels, mm -hmm. even when it comes to kids, mm -hmm. you know, I'm serious. Mm -hmm. How do you handle it? Okay. Mm -hmm. So. I'll, I'll tell you again, in the spirit of transparency, today is our daughter's anniversary, her 21st, and now you know the spouse I didn't like. But anyway, um, um, I love him now. Yeah. And so when it's hang time for the anniversary gift, what did I say? She doesn't remember. I came to him and I said, baby, 
let's you want, you want to give her some money. money. Yeah. I said, how much money should we give? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I gave you a number. That, that's right. And that's what we said. Mm -hmm. Now, I might have said more, but that's the number I asked him. Yeah. I could have negotiated, but I didn't think it was a bad figure. Mm -hmm. So I did ask. And if when I asked, if he had said, say, let, let's say he told me $100. He said more than that. And I thought it should have been 200 Let's, this is all hypothetical. Then I could say, baby, I think we should give more. And we would have talked about it. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Without yeah. an argument. With, no, without an no. argument. We would talk about it. Because here's the thing. My philosophy is I, you, I don't think your children can get too old to give them money. That's just my philosophy. So maybe that's something you should talk about. But I always remind people, I hate to mention this person's name. Let me just say the 45th president because I try not to say his name. <laughs> he told you, he told all of us that his father gave him a small loan. Mm -hmm. I think it was $10 million. Mm -hmm. When he was about in debt. Mm -hmm. So if his father can keep giving him money, mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep giving my children money. Mm -hmm. But we just have to negotiate yeah. how much it gets. Yeah. And, and it really, yeah. I never, really never had problems with giving my children no, because my children are, I only have two. And they are special to me. I I will always think about what it is, but also to have to look at the budget. He, he is going to look at the budget. I'm not going to yeah. look at the budget. I'm just going to say that. So budget. so I think that's oh. that's what we have to you know sometimes let me look at this budget to you know so, yeah. and, and, and that's what he brings to the process that yeah. I wouldn't think about. So I'm just don't saying. be afraid of the communication. No, no. don't no. be afraid. No. Yeah, and look, believe the best about the other. I know Trevor loves his children. Yeah. And so does your husband. Mm -hmm. He loves them. How can we show them love in our different ways? And the children actually do come to me first because they know I'm yeah. the softy. Yeah. So, <laughs> they know who the softy yeah. is in this relationship. It all depends on who the softy is and what this point. Well, if it's if it's a fix the car. Yeah. They, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. Fix the car, the computer. Fix the house, the whatever. Yeah. 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 They're gonna okay, you got some hands in. I know. I'm trying to can we finish we this page and we'll one, two. Okay. Um, focus focus on, the on the present. present. In other words, don't fo have it. And, and, and Here's a quote. It's your job to do what? Love. 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 And it's God's job to do what? Change. Oh, you, here's, here's the problem. We think it's our job to change people. Right. And it's God's job to love them. Yes. Yes. But it's our job yes. to love them. Remember that first text this lady read so well for us? It says, clothe yourself in love. Yes. So, so stop, stop trying. trying to do what only God can do. If you invest patiently in your relationship, respect other people's perspective and sow good seeds. You'll reap a pleasant harvest in the long term. You love, not the force of the argument, can give the hope to the most severely damaged among us that bears healing for the broken places of the human soul. Love is transformative. Love is transformative. Mm -hmm. Let's love like God does. Yeah. Okay. Now, I don't know who was one and who was two. But one, two, three. Can we do that? Okay. One. Love in the home situation. I don't have any children. Mm -hmm. But Angela, Alexa, Andrew. <laughs> Where do I get out of that life? I mean, you know what sometimes I can <laughs> I try to tell them what's right. She does too. But I try to tell them, I said, don't worry, Ed. I said, put, put this on. <laughs> I, 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 said, I said, you're a Christian. And when people see you dressed this way, what do so, you think? So, so you've told them that, right? And I, I, and I, 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 I can't you. stop saying it. Okay. <laughs> well, here's how I'm going to help them. Jesus about uh -huh. unless they ask you 
And unless they asked it, they said, do you think I should wear this? Oh, that's an opening. No, they're not going to ask that. They know not. They know not going to ask that because they know the answer. They know the answer. Okay, two. And then we're going to three. Um, well, on the situation of what my sister was saying over here, uh, and I know said y'all love y'all kids and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I think the situation on the money thing with giving to children is not about love or things like that. It's about what what you know you should do or should not do because of situation and circumstances. That I, think I think that's true. I think that's true. I think that because there are some children. It's you, why you be enabled. I agree with you. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So I just have to throw that to you, baby. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. That, <laughs> what, what, what the, they're not enabling. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. 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 Yes, Pastor Goodluck. Yeah. Um, in a situation, uh, you know, you had a, a screen up that said, uh, "Don't withdraw the love." Right. And you gave the illustration about your children. <laughs> Getting married, and uh, but they married. I think you said married somebody you don't like. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we didn't necessarily appreciate it. Yeah. 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 But you, you don't go to the marriage. That's it. That's an indicator of withdrawing love. Mm -hmm. I think so. The child, the child would feel that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, now I want to ask you a question about a situation where it's same sex marriage. Uh, that's more complicated. That's yeah. complicated. Yeah, it's more complicated. And your ground, standing your ground me, I'm not attended. But at the same time, I, I don't want to withdraw my love. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. then you'd have to talk to them and explain that. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. you'd have to make a real effort to show yeah. them that you still love them. I guess we'd have. You love them, but you're not going to support We have a lot. We have in our family mm -hmm. people who have those kinds of things. Lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that I would not go, uh, but I think I, I'm certainly going to want to appreciate them and love them. Yeah, I, I, and the pastor looks like he's ready to get up. He's almost no, I'm just, I'm just looking at the hands and question, but yes. this is good. Yeah. This, I'm going to stand up so that way people know that this, this is the end of your presentation. <laughs> they know that, okay. but we do want to take them. Okay, <laughs> now, how many hands do we have? Huh? Three. One, two, three. Oh. That's it. You didn't want to be three. You wanted to be one. <laughs> no, one, two, three. These are the last three. And then we're going to finish our presentation. Please speak up. I'm so sorry. I have a hearing impairment. I really do. No, no, I do. I need a hearing aid. About the dress issue, there is one thing to talk about. But another thing is I'll give an example. And they say, well, I will see you. So uh, yeah, uh, I think he said that when our when they go out, they have to remember that they're being an example. Yes, I think that's true. But if you've already shared that information, they know that then. They're probably not interested in being the example you want them to be. <laughs> two, two. I, um, since we're gonna close soon, I just want to commend my pastor um, for allowing this to happen. Um, the one word, what one of the words that's, that has really stood out, which um, stood out, is that talk, communication, talk communication, relationship. Mm -hmm. If we were able to create what we're doing right here on issues that everybody may not understand, mm -hmm. but they need to understand because mm -hmm. once they understand, that's going to control all of that, some of that conflict mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. because they will know better how mm -hmm. to relate. Mm -hmm. So we can come together as a family Mm -hmm. and have these talks more frequently because there are people who, you know, you know, they think you're a demon if you're trying to love somebody who's a lesbian or, or, or they, they mm -hmm. look down on you because, you know, you, know, you can mm -hmm. show some kind of appreciation mm -hmm. to the person. Yes, you know? exactly. Yeah. We're not, we're not condoning. Mm -hmm. it's, right. it's that yeah. relationship with Christ that's, that's going right. to help yeah. us that's relate right. to any lesbian Exactly. That's right. Yeah. All them, that's right. All them letters. I, 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 I can't say all that. But I'm saying, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So thank you for doing this.
Mm -hmm. And if we can come together at different times to discuss these different issues, yeah. I think it will help us to relate. Thank you so much, Paul. Yes. Um, the only um, <laughs> thing I wanted to add is that a lot of times, Cora is better. I remember I had a friend, and she told me her kids are going to marriage now. But what she said, she don't ever talk to her kids about what they do. If they try to go somewhere that she don't agree with, she doesn't fuss with them or anything. All she does is pray and ask the Lord to what she to She never fails it. Yes. All right. Here's, here's the last two or three things. Choose, Choose your, your battles, battles, which we've already yeah. said. Everything's not worth fighting about. Choose your battles. Towels. And, and the, issue of prayer, yes. the issue of prayer is critical. Yes. We do it every morning and every night yes. for our children. Yeah. Don't use deadly weapons, sarcasm, put-downs, put and intimidation. Learn yeah. to listen. I said it this morning. Be willing to forgive. I want to talk about forgiveness just in a hot second. Too often when we've done something wrong, we don't know how to apologize. And there are three or four um, components of a good apology. Number one, you have to say you're sorry. Number two, you have to say I was wrong. I was wrong. Number three, you, you need to say, what can I do to make it right? How can, how, how can how, what do I need to do? And and the book I'm reading now says that we need to make it right in their love language. Clearly, Gary Chapman. Right. So 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 here are the things. Too often we just say, "Well, I'm sorry." I said I was sorry. And you wonder why the person said, "Well, they weren't sincere." But because they said, "I'm sorry." You know, I was wrong. I did so and so. That was wrong. I hurt your feelings. That was wrong. Right. And then what can I do to make it right? Yeah. And, and we recommend use humor and sarcasm. Yes. Just, just uh, use humor, not sarcasm. Yes. Just quickly. What about when you have a situation where you, you, you hurt a person, mm -hmm. but you really don't feel like what you did was a reason for them to be hurt? <laughs> and you, you, but you apologize, mm -hmm. but you really don't feel you were wrong. So, I, so I, they're I, not going to accept apologies for saying, I'm sorry you, you're hurt. <laughs> you really have to say, okay, what you're saying is good intentions doesn't mean you won't be hurt. That's what you're really saying. I didn't intend to hurt them, so they shouldn't be hurt. But good intentions doesn't mean you won't be hurt. And again, in the spirit of transparency, because I have a story for every occasion, uh, when we were very early in our marriage, right after our daughter was born, mm -hmm. my husband came to me. Mm -hmm. He says he doesn't remember it, but I remember it very well. <laughs> he said, you need to do something about your face and your hair. Well, I, I promise see. you, that's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember thinking, why did you leave my body out? You know, because I didn't, you know, I'm a lot overweight. I gained about 40 pounds with each child. So, you know, <laughs> why did you leave my body out? I still love her. <laughs> so we had to go back and talk about it. I was hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what he, what he meant to say, and we got it clear in our conversation because we kept talking. Mm -hmm. What he meant to say was, you're so busy taking care of the baby. Mm -hmm. You're not taking care of you. Yeah, right. I, I could have heard that. <laughs> right. but, but so I was hurt. Because mm -hmm. I already felt ugly. We had just gone to the store the day before and I couldn't get anything on. Mm -hmm. So I felt horrible anyway. And then he said, you need to do something about your face and hair. <laughs> and that was really the same thing to say. So you say that, <laughs> and you have to apologize. Right. I'm sorry. I want, but I really love you, and I want you to take care of yourself. Now, I can hear that. Uh -huh. That's so much better. That, I can hear that. <laughs> so does that make That's sense? So yeah. That's so uh -huh. I didn't hear him say he was wrong. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're yes, right. I, you're, I, right. I, you're right, he didn't. But well, that was I, before I, we had read the book. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was wrong in how I even said it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. These are other guidelines. Develop good ground, ground rules. rules. Know when to let it go. Yeah. You know, like, like let, uh, it let it go, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Express feelings in words, not action. Mm. And end with prayer. And we don't mean prayer as a trite thing. I really, we really are serious about the issue of prayer. Amen. And although, yeah. 
these are just, if you're not gonna have conflict, you know, plan your remarks before you go. Mm -hmm. When you know it's gonna be a conflictual issue, mm -hmm. pray before you go. Mm -hmm. Help me to find the right words. Speak, Speak clearly and be transparent. And don't have a hidden agenda. Mm -hmm. All right, keep going. We're just going to remember Conflict is inevitable. Opportunity to hear another perspective. Opportunity to draw closer. Really, at the end of the conflict, if we're really doing it right, we really learn to understand each other more. It's time to grow and expand. Comes from strengthening the relation. And the final thought, practice self-care. Start the day with your own private worship. Ask God for guidance and situation. Physical exercise, keep situation in perspective and get an outside perspective mentor. Closing text, do not, I just pay, want you to look at that. You do see that? not pay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, we pay evil with blessing because to do this, you were called so that you may inherit. Look at what the soldiers are shooting. <clears throat> wow. See no, that? Hearts. Love. All right. All Thank right. you very much. That's his <laughs> Any final questions? Yeah, I got. I, um, I have a request. I have a request. <laughs> you, uh, the next time that you all out, can you all share some more light on the testimony you brought up earlier, or uh, for some he made units? Oh, units. Oh, okay. units. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's he'll do that. <laughs> I am studying hard the issue of this transgender issue yeah. within the church. Okay, uh, and I said, as I said, I have been praying and asking God to provide me insight, more insight in this issue, because this week I read, was listening to when Philip baptized the eunuch. Mm -hmm. What does that say? What does it say? Okay, so it's in the Bible. Okay, one of those this is what we're doing. Yeah. And we can uh, uh, y'all speak on mental health issues? Because we have our old sister has mental health issues. And I never was able to accept it. That she passed, I learned more about her disease and stuff. But the psychiatrist would tell me, is this how she does it? Maybe that's how she can. Yeah. It's how she's doing it. I know she's going to do better. She's going to do better. Well, I, 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 let me just say one minute, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. I don't know uh, if you have any chronic illness. Mm -hmm. I have high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So because I have high blood pressure, I have to take pills every day. Mm -hmm. um, and my mother had high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And when she would get stressed, she would get a headache. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to get a headache. Mm -hmm because she had high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. That was her illness. Mm -hmm. Mental illness is an illness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And people who are mentally ill, specifically schizophrenic, are, mm, yeah, right. their behavior is not something they can often control. Mm -hmm. right. If they hear voices, that's yeah. a part of the illness. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing they can do about that. Yeah. And so just as there's nothing I can do about, I mean, there are people who say that I can do things about my high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Um, I just found it's really important to take that little pill mm -hmm. every day and help me manage my high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And for people who are schizophrenic, if they took their pills, they manage their days better also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't, take, they don't take it because all medications, mm -hmm. including the little pill I take every day, mm -hmm. have side effects. Mm -hmm. And she didn't like the side effects. Mm -hmm. I don't like the side effects either, mm -hmm. but I just have found other ways to resolve it. Well, and that's the that's the that's a, oh, schizophrenic. that's part a part of, of the gift. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was seeing a woman who who was schizophrenic because mm -hmm. uh, I have a very tiny private practice, and I stopped seeing her because I don't mm -hmm. I don't have the skill set mm -hmm. to work with people who hear voices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They need to see a psychiatrist, mm -hmm. and they need medication. Mm -hmm. And I sent her to a psychiatrist mm -hmm. to get medication, mm -hmm. and she said. I ain't crazy. Mm -hmm. He thinks I'm crazy. I ain't taking that medicine. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's nothing I could do about that. I just knew I couldn't see her. Mm -hmm. It would be unfair to take her money mm -hmm. That's what I'm if I couldn't help her. Mm -hmm. okay. How do you deal with people that not just schizophrenia, but with the um, anger issues and, and just 
suicidal. Um, suicidal and so so people who are depressed are the same thing. They Generally, people who are suicidal are also depressed. Yeah, sure. And so therefore, they again need to see someone who could help them with medication. Mm -hmm. What if they don't? Yeah, you can't. Yeah, the same as her children. That's why we have so many homeless people. That's what, mm. exactly. Really, you cannot make people, mm. even if they're mentally ill, take the medicine. Mm. Sure, okay. yeah, this is, this, let me in a nutshell, and I'm sorry, Pastor, in a nutshell, talk about the American mental health system. It's whacked, it's ruined. Mm -hmm. Okay, when I started out in social work, I worked with the mentally ill in a mental hospital. Mm -hmm. We used to keep people forever. So in the 1960s, when I was in the, the mental health centers, mm -hmm. the state hospitals we call them, they kept people for 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, forever. Okay, we decided, frankly, we couldn't afford that. That's all. It wasn't that it didn't work. We couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. And then they came up with medications. Mm -hmm. The medications work. Mm -hmm. People won't take them. So if they're not going to take them, it puts families in a bind. Yeah. You take them to the mental hospital. You can't keep them more than three days. That's right. See, you see, I know the mental health stuff. Three days. Mm -hmm. And if they don't want to stay, they can leave. Sign up. And where are you left when yeah. they leave? And, I, and it's unfortunate, we don't have any other recourse. We don't even have a cheap alternative. We have day treatment. All mental, health, all mental health centers have a day treatment program, but it's voluntary. Pastor, I just want to say this right quick. I suffer with manic depression uh -huh. bipolar, uh -huh. and I know that I have to take my medicine. Exactly. I know that there are side effects exactly. from the medicine. Exactly. Thank God that my husband knows the side effects mm -hmm. from the medicine. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I try to exercise, mm -hmm. and I try to recognize the moment because sometimes this person is coming in that mm -hmm. I don't like. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I can't control her even exactly. when I try. Thank, thank you so much. I know that I need medication. Thank you so much. You know, I, thank you, you know, so I tell much him, for being you know, I said, look, I think I, I, I need help now. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, I think I need to just admit mm -hmm. myself in the hospital mm -hmm. because it. it's like a relapse. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can relapse. Mm -hmm. I can. I go into the. I go into the doctor's office again. Talk about high blood pressure, and sometimes it's 180 or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the doctor's like, "What is wrong? What's wrong with you?" So then, then you have to think, "What am I doing wrong? What do I need to change?" So that's. Thank you so much. I so appreciate your transparency. Yes. Thank you so much. Was there any other? Yes. Last. Last. Last, last comment. Um, I. I just like to speak to this in terms of dealing with. Um, I would say a church issue, basically, but it is an issue of more widely, um, maybe not recognized. But it's the issue of dealing with widows. Oh, and I'm trying to mm -hmm. work with widows because I am a widow. Mm -hmm. And when I became a widow, I didn't know whether to turn left mm -hmm. or right mm -hmm. or go up. Mm -hmm. Or that, mm -hmm. and there aren't quote end quote uh, organizations that can really deal with it. Mm -hmm. So my mind came back to the church. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. God didn't say, "Okay, I'm suggesting that you take care of widows." You know, between the time mm -hmm. you watch your soap operas and mm -hmm. and America's Got Talent, mm -hmm. He commanded mm -hmm. the church mm -hmm. to take care of widows. Mm -hmm. But nobody has listened. That's right. And widows have been thrown the under the bus. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I guess I am asking that the next time maybe we mm -hmm. do something, mm -hmm. let's deal with something that um, is relevant to a, a population that has been just that locked out. I, I said this this morning, and I'll say this, I'll let her respond. This is just the beginning of what the Spirit has told me to make a part of the DNA of the church. Amen. Because we, we don't just need a mental health day. We need mental health, period. Yes. Yes. And, and it's, it's, it's salvational. Yes. And so Definitely. this is something that, as we talk with the Frasers and, and other uh, God has gifted our church for such a time as this. There are many others, but we want to utilize the gifts and talents and wisdom 
that God has placed in this church. And so I'm going to let her respond to that issue, and then I'm, I'm going to close us up, because we can be here all day. Now. Yes, we could. Yeah. But, we, no. but we, we can form a relationship where they'll be able to come okay. from yeah, time to time. Okay. <laughs> My church has grief ministry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My church has grief ministry. We have a grief support group. Mm -hmm. And uh, Donna Scott and I, uh, we go around to churches. We've actually gone to um, several churches in South Central. Mm -hmm. We went. We did a church, as I was sharing with someone in St. Louis, in which we talk about setting up a grief ministry. Every church, just like you have personal ministry leader, mm -hmm. you have AYS leader, mm -hmm. you should have a grief ministry leader. Mm -hmm. And the church needs to decide, what do we want to do for grief? Mm -hmm. You can do everything from something simple as, you know, right after someone dies, making sure they have food. A lot of us do that already. Two, uh, uh, sending out literature, grief support groups, um, having people to visit them on a regular basis once a month. That's what we're kind of moving towards in our church. There's so many things we can do. Um, generally, unless it's a really big church, you might not narrow your group to just widows, I would say. Mm -hmm. Because if someone lost a child, you know, as we talked about this morning, that's pretty really traumatic too. And, um, um, and you know, people lose their parents, yes. and that's traumatic. So you, the grief support groups and the grief ministry should cover all of those things. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. You're absolutely correct. We do not recognize the needs of people who are grieving. Amen. Have you have you been blessed today? Yeah. Yeah. Can we thank the Frasers yeah. for coming? Yeah. Yeah. Give God praise for the wisdom that He's placed mm -hmm. and for you sharing that with yeah. us today. This was yeah. practical. Mm -hmm. This was real, mm -hmm. tangible stuff that we can deal with and take from this place. Mm -hmm. This won't be the last time. Amen. I, I hear Amen. God saying He wants to make us whole. Amen. And before He did every miracle, He asked, "Do you believe? Right. Do you have faith?" He dealt with the mind to reach the heart. Mm -hmm. We've dealt with the mind with doctrine, and that that has its place. But we have not yet dealt with the mind on heal, healing and wholeness and mental health. God wants to bless us. He wants to save us. If we're going to be saving agents in this last work, we've got to be whole first. Amen. So this is serious. It's important. And we've been blessed today, but this is not the end. You hold on. We're going to continue. As the Holy Spirit continues pouring out on us, he'll continue to show us the way in which we should go. But our job is to make this house, this church, a loving place that draws souls where they feel acceptance, where they feel belonging, where they feel purpose and identity. Because if you give those basic elements to someone, then they, then now they feel like, what, what can you do? For, how can you help me? Now they're asking the question. They're coming to you, Sister Easter, asking you, how can you help me? Because I felt love. I felt acceptance. I feel like you care. I, and I don't only feel that. I know that. And that's the kind of place we want to make this as God's about to bring souls in this church. We want to be ready. Amen. All right, let's uh, have closing prayer. We stand, everybody stand. You've been sitting a while. Let's stand. That's a, that's a good song to slip in. Someone started off.
Lord, Amen. we've made a commitment today that we are going to be there. You've made every way for us to be there. We've got to accept it. We've got to believe it. And we've got to take it. Lord, here we, we're saying we present ourselves to you for wholeness of mind, wholeness of heart, wholeness of body, whole, wholeness of, of, of salvation, Lord, so we can be a saving agent for someone else. Lord, now as we depart from this place, never from your presence, continue to be with the Trevors, continue to be with us in our ministry here with a dying community that needs to know mm -hmm. what we know, Amen. that needs to know who we know. So help us, Lord, to be lights in the dark world. Yeah. Now bless us, give us peace that passeth all understanding, and continue to guard our minds in Christ Jesus, we do pray. So in your name, Lord, we give you all glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you until we meet again. We'll see you Wednesday night prayer meeting. Okay. Okay. All right. amen. 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 Amen.